Hi, everyone. Um, I think that's the best thing that I've heard in this conference so far. I cannot probably beat that. Thank you so much. Um, but uh, what probably I can say is uh, international cooperation doesn't only need to involve governments. It can also involve industry in one form or the other. And uh, my experience is mostly um, in, in that particular uh, domain. So uh, I began uh, as a student probably 15 years ago trying to build uh, student satellites out here in India. And uh, one thing that uh, struck my mind is uh, why is everything so expensive when we buy everything from outside and why don't we do this here? So I uh, studied in Europe and came back and set up a company called Thrua Space here. Um, it's one of the exhibitors here, and I'm very happy that it today has flown a couple of missions and uh, has taken off. Um, beyond that, I think uh, one of the things that struck me back then is uh, how little is the visibility of the Indian supply chain. Uh, because at the end, we have so many interesting capabilities in this country, but uh, unfortunately, we are not exposed uh, to the international audience or the international supply chain as to what we have to offer. So this led to me going back to Europe in uh, 2017 or so and set up a company in the Netherlands. And uh, uh, one of the missions that we took upon is to globalize the supply chain and flatten the whole thing. Uh, expose supply chains in India, in South Korea, in Japan, in Russia, in other places as well. So uh, one of the things that we saw as a key missing tool in the in international realm is uh, a supply chain platform that exposes international capabilities, so you increase the competitiveness of the in industry and you reduce the price and uh, reduce the eventually apply economics to access to space. Right? So, so I'm happy to report a few things. I would say given uh, about 10 years plus of effort has gone into some of these things and uh, maybe it's good to discuss these as to what we've done uh, or from an industry standpoint and from the India context. So uh, one of the things that we did uh, is um, we wanted, we identified a partner in Germany who wanted to manufacture their parts in India. Um, and you know this was already seven, eight years ago. And uh, I'm happy today that uh, this particular joint venture exists for the last uh, three years or so. And uh, it is in Ahmedabad. And uh, hopefully, the first satellite will be rolled off from there early next year. Uh, this has already created over 100 jobs for people in that region, and uh, I'm sure that this is going to grow as they uh, move further along. So I think this also touches upon uh, one of the big successes in Make in India, where we've really brought uh, one of the companies to India to really make in India. Um, the second thing that I probably want to say is, um, so one of the other things is the, there are two kinds of Indian companies that I see, one of um, infrastructure, manpower, and capability to produce something, one of uh, somebody who has real uh, full products that you can customize for any missions that you can fly anywhere around the world. So we started identifying a lot of these uh, suppliers that are out here in India, and I'm happy to report that at least uh, half a dozen of these suppliers over the last two or three years have been able to plug themselves into the international demand ecosystem and their components that are made here in India, designed here in India, are flying on various missions in the US, in, um, in Europe, and in Asia, and other places. So beyond that, I think uh, one of the things that, again, was very interesting to explore uh, is there is a lot of offshoring that comes to India in IT services, in biotech, in other places. So one thing that we did not see a lot being exposed here in India is really how do you bring offshoring to India in space? So uh, we've now helped a couple of companies uh, which are primarily based in, in the US to open up their uh, offshoring centers here in India um, and basically use the talent in uh, software services in space to expand their uh, you know, manpower here and then uh, look at India as a hub for space services-based uh, offshoring models uh, that are out here. So uh, beyond that, I think uh, I would, uh, I mean, these are some of the highlights that I would say of uh, how India has been plugging in into the international domain with respect to business. Um, there's a few, uh, let's say, other programs that have been interesting for a lot of the new companies. Uh, one is really uh, a grant program called the Indo-US Science and Technology Forum 
Uh, one of the companies called Astrom got a $200,000 grant with a matching company in the US. Uh, any of such grant programs uh, that the governments can create, uh, I think are fantastic. The other one is the, the one from Australia that has been recently announced for a $15 million program uh, where Indian companies can tie up with the Australian one. Um, so I think uh, the other part of all of this is really how do you take Indian businesses outside and one way to do that is perhaps uh, you know, have Indian companies participate in one trade missions that uh, our missions can take to other countries so that we can have them uh, showcase uh, the capabilities to right kind of customers. And the second is really, uh, there are three companies uh, here, including uh, Digantara, Astrogate, and uh, Graha Space that participated in the University of uh, South Australia ICC program and have benefited from uh, uh, going to Australia and essentially trying to see if there is uh, business that uh, can be done there. So uh, beyond, I think, uh, you know, all of these things, um, uh, so I believe that today we have, uh, in my experience of having dealt with more, more, a lot of the new space companies here, we have uh, successfully already raised in new space companies over $300 million in funding over the last uh, five years or so. We've uh, created about 3,000 jobs as an ecosystem in India that are new outside of uh, you know, all the traditional developments. And there is a massive potential to uh, raise more capital because one of the problems that uh, we see is uh, India doesn't have investors that have an appetite to do investment beyond uh, the $10 million uh, range. Uh, so in space tech, and it's pretty high risk. And one of the challenges that we are trying to solve is how do you get investors to invest 100 million plus in Indian companies through FDI. Uh, so this is one of the areas that uh, I think uh, with respect to if we have in cooperation with the foreign investors that we can work on. Uh, we've also seen actually a couple of new space companies acquire American and uh, companies. Uh, so Satcho recently acquired a US company and uh, uh, that's one of the big successes with uh, respect to new space uh, here in India where finally a company that has uh, grown in India has gone and acquired uh, that to a startup that is uh, like five years old has gone and acquired a U.S. company, uh, and it shows the growth of the of the sector. Um, so overall, I think um, I believe that uh, we have the potential to build something that can in the next ten years that has the potential of uh, creating about three billion dollars in value with respect to B two B businesses uh, services that India can take to the world and create about thirty thousand jobs here in India. Thank you so much.